after we create the component, well, we can't really hand this over to the end consumer like this, right, Gian? We're going to need some stylish enclosure, and that's the magic of 3D Sculptor, right, Gian? Exactly. Yeah, we got to make this thing look good, but we also we need to mount these things to something, the, this motor and, and everything. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick things up in 3D Sculptor using the, the model that you create from 3D Experience SolidWorks. And I'm, I already have an idea in my head of what I want this enclosure to look like. And I'm going to use 3D Sculptor to bring that idea to life. Oh. And now it's all yours, Gian, <laughs> to see what you have in mind for that stylish enclosure. Oh yeah, John, I can't wait. Can't wait to show that. I'm going to go ahead and jump into 3D Sculptor and create, I'm just going to start with a new component. I'm going to call this my trimmer enclosure. And then I'm going to go back to my task because I was on the task that you were working on. So I can see when that was done. I see that you completed it and I can even grab that deliverable. I can grab the model that you use there. And what I'm going to do is just take it, click it, drag it and drop it across tabs into my design, into my design app and insert it. I could have opened it as well, but I want to insert this because I want to create my enclosure around this thing. So what you, what you might notice first off here is some of these components, in fact, most of these components all have a black edge outlines. They all kind of have a black colored edge. Whereas the, the component that my mouse is hovering over, the one that John just created, that one actually has uh, some blue outlines on it because the geometry hasn't been converted yet. So if you use 3D Creator or 3D Sculptor or 3D Experience SolidWorks, you might have heard of another app called the Derived Format Converter. So that's the app that I'm going to use to generate the derived output from the SOLIDWORKS data so that I can reference all of that geometry, all of the things that John just did. If I convert all that geometry, now I can actually use it in, uh, in my assembly and reference those, uh, reference it in sketches and in features. So I'm going to request that that one be generated a derived output for the component that, jo that John just made. Um, and that's why we threw this in, because it's another new enhancement to the user interface that now you're, it lets you know when it's done and even gives you a button to resolve the geometry now. And you'll see your, your model will turn to black edges. We can start using those edges in our sketches and features. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, maybe I want to hide that axis quick. And then let's just, let's get into the subdivision stuff. Let's get into the cool part of this modeling. Now, subdivision modeling, inherently you start with these primitive shapes and I'm going to start with the box shape. Now, when I throw it in here, I'm going to throw it on our, our mid plane here, our YZ plane. And uh, I'm going to make it go about the mid plane just to help us with symmetry later. And then you just saw I could scale it uniformly or in any of these three principal directions with those arrows. And then I can even toggle these, uh, these little buttons here to control how many control segments or how many loops I have going around this model. But that looks good enough for now. I'm gonna accept that. And let's just, uh, let's just keep moving on. I can, I can go to a different orthogonal views just by hitting the, uh, the faces of that chair in the corner. And then this tool I'm using is called the robot. We use it to translate with the arrows, to rotate with those arcs, and to scale with those points at the end of the arrows that you just saw. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn on transparency a little bit. I wanna be able to see these components inside so I can model around them. And then I also want to um, just add symmetry about that YZ plane we were talking about. And that's going to put a new loop around our model here. And it's going to show in green so that I know that, hey, there's symmetry turned on around that loop. So everything will be acting about that, that one plane, our symmetry there. Now, clicking any of the faces of that chair allows us to get to that orthogonal view. And I just used the shift arrow keys to switch between different orthogonal views, which you can do in SolidWorks as well. So when you need to jump from profile to profile, that's a huge time saver. You know, you don't even need to, to worry about using your mouse or anything. It's just use your keyboard. But that's a big help in X shape. Another cool feature we can do in X shape is add sharp edges. So you might have thought that maybe you can only just create, you know, one really organic surface with this, but no, this is now, we, we now have almost two independent surfaces just connecting this one body. So that's just however you choose to model it. And then as you need to have more control over things, you know, you can use our line by line command, 
which is similar to the functionality of the robot, but it allows you to align all of these points that I selected to each other, but then control them all with the endpoints and the midpoint of that line that I'm just manipulating right now. So that really helps us get a little bit of a, of a finer degree of control over our model here. So moving on, there isn't much else in terms of tools. You know, it's mostly just using the robot to slowly sculpt this thing into the shape that we want. Now, another point about the robot, sometimes the arrows aren't exactly pointing in the direction that you want them to. Now, this is because it's based on your selection. So if you select a single point, it's going to give you arrows that point, you know, directly normal to the surface and then in the lateral and transverse directions, which is what you're seeing right now. But maybe I need to move it only in the X, Y, or Z direction. Well, you can toggle that on just by right clicking on the robot. And now it will keep you in that mode, only moving in the X, Y, or Z direction until you change it. All right, adding more loops. So, you know, the more detail we add, the more control loops we need. So I'm just gonna use the insert loops command, which also exists down below in the action bar, but you can click it right in our shortcuts as well to quickly just go from making adjustments to adding that that we're looking for. So as we continue along here, I'm, I know that I'm gonna need a parting line around this. This is gonna be an injection molded part and we're, we're not gonna do everything to prep it for injection molding, but we wanna be smart about how we model this thing so that you know when the time comes, you know most of our work is already done. So that's why I'm gonna add a crease around this whole side of the model so that you know we can get the draft that we're looking for, but you'll see more on that later. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is how you can get more localized control over a certain area in the model, and that's using the subdivide feature. So the subdivide feature just takes these four faces and we'll split them into a new number of faces. In this case, I think it's gonna be about 14, but this is where the term subdivision modeling comes from. So it'll basically take an offset of the edges you selected and place those within. And then you can grab, control, push and pull those however you'd like to get that shape that you're looking for. And that'll help us you know, stay organized with our power button. All right, we're gonna turn on draft analysis, do a quick manufacturability check. We already have the ZX plane selected. And the yellow color is what's bothering me. That's where we need to have more draft. And the best part about 3D Sculptor, in my opinion, I love this. I love it. it's dynamic. It changes as you make changes, the draft analysis updates, which is just so So you're cool. saying all you got to do is pick and drag a couple faces, push and pull it, and it updates real time. Exactly. That's wow. exactly what I'm saying, John. It's, it just, it makes it so much easier for the user. But... That's not even the coolest thing. I, I think that I think that zebra stripes are another really cool feature that a lot of our SolidWorks users are familiar with, but it's it's a great tool for really checking and understanding the behavior of your surfaces. And really, we have a few different surfaces going on here because of the creases that we added. So this is how we can really understand the behavior. So, so Gian, I understand that SolidWorks users may be familiar with this, but how about for... Um non-existing users can you give a quick analysis on maybe how you would interpret this right now yeah sure i'm actually i'm going to zoom in a little bit so when these zebra stripes get very flat or you just get large spaces in between them like for instance right in the center of the screen right now where it's very white um, that just means that 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 surface is getting very close to planar and the more crazy and kind of wacky the surface starts to look the more the stripes start to like you know all come together at a certain point. That's where how you know that you might have kind of a puckering surface there, or you just have a very dramatic change in, in that surface at that point, which you know may or may not be what you're looking for. But I think I think we can keep moving on from here. Um, I do want to just make sure our parting line is is lined up with our um, our XZ plane. Now we don't have to do that. That's not necess a, like a necessity for making injection molding parts, though it does make our life easier, both as a designer and manufacturing this thing later. It is easier with a nice flat parting line the way you see here. So maybe I wanna grab that plane, but I can't select through my subdivision body. Well, another new feature, you can now toggle on and off the ability to, to, to select through the subdivision body. 
and then I can align it to geometry or the body. In this case, I'm actually just going to align it to the geometry. I want to snap that edge right to our plane. And we can go to our side view and, and see how that looks. It looks like it did the job. So I think I'm ready to exit the subdivision environment. I think I'm done with 3D Sculptor for now. I think it's time to add some parametric features um, by switching to 3D Creator.